Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Clarabelle Nightingale here, back at it with another video. Without further ado here, let's get into the video. So where we left off in the last episode, we had just gotten back to the den, and I kind of want to read some stuff. Instead of not doing... Anything. At all. Um... I'm just gonna look through Wikipedia. Nope. Why? Lisa. Wham. Okay. So I'm gonna read the one, the death of Louisa Lamb while we kind of play this game, because this is honestly really weird. There's just a few ones that I kind of want to read. These are like mostly true crime cases, cold cases, or cases that just don't make sense. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I'm obsessed with. Don't worry, I got Emery. We're good. Don't worry, I got 7M. Don't worry, Emery. So basically, we're going to read the death of Elisa Lamb for the beginning of this kind of a thing. On February 19th, 2013, the body of Canadian tourist Elisa Lam, Chinese name, Chinese, born Lam Yohi, uh, Ho Yi, was recovered from a large cistern atop the Stay On Main Hotel in downtown Los Angeles, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, Angeles, I don't know, where she had been a guest. She was last seen alive on January 31st and, and was was reported missing by her parents February 1st. Her body was discovered by a hotel maintenance worker investigating complaints of flooding and low water pressure. So that's basically how this starts off. We're gonna feed them and we're gonna howl. Bunch of stuff. Okay, so born Daniel Heal Hoyi April 30th, 19th. 1991, Vancouver, British Columbia, Colombian, Canadian. Disappeared January 31st, 2013, Los Angeles, California. Died February 1st, 2013, age 21. So she would be. I don't know. Cause of death accidental drowning. Drowning, which does not make sense at all because what, you'll see why in, in a bit here. Body discovered February 19, 2013, Stay on May, Los Angeles, California. Occupation, student. Interest in Lamb's disappearance increased on February 13th when the Los Angeles Police Department, um, L LAPD, yeah, LAPD, released security camera footage of her behaving erratically in a hotel elevator on the day that she was last seen alive. The, the video went viral with an autopsy performed on February 21st was inconclusive in determining the manner of Lamb's death. The Los Angeles Country Corners Office subsequently ruled the death an accident for drowning with bipolar disorder as a significant contributing factor. For real. 57 left. Get back here. Guests at the Stay On Main sued the hotel over the incident, and Lamb's parents filed a separate suit later that year. The latter was dismissed in 2015. Some of the early internet interests noted what were considered to be a, considered unusual to be unusual similarities between Lamb, Lamb's death and the 2002 horror film Dark Water. The case has since been referenced in international pop culture and than the subject of several creative works. Background. Lam, the daughter of immigrants from Hong Kong, was a student at the University of British Columbia. Although she was not re British registered at 
the beginning of 2013 to stay on Maine, also known as the Cecil Hotel, where Lamb was last seen alive. In mid-2010, Lamb began a blog named Ether Field, a blog on a blog on blog spot. There we go. Hang on. We're going to our carcasses. Because we, got, because we need to get food. Over the next two years, she posted pictures of models in fashionable clothing and accounts and accounts of her life, particularly her struggle with mental illness. In January 2012 vlog, vlog post, Lam laminated that a relapse at the start of the current school term had forced her to drop several classes, leaving her feeling so utterly dis directionless and lost. She titled her post, You're always haunted by the idea you're wasting your life. Which is true. After a quotation from novelist Chuck... I cannot pronounce his last name. Pronounce her... Yeah. She used that quote as an aerograph for her blog. Lamb worried that her transcripts, transcripts would look suspicious with so many withdrawals and that it would result in her being unable to continue her studies and attend graduation gra a a attend and graduate school. A little over a little over two years after Lamb had started blogging, she now she hang on. Yeah, got food. She announced she would be abandoning her blog for an for another she had started on Tumblr. Novella, novella, no, novella, 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 novella. It's con, content, it, content, content mostly consisted of fashion posts, quotes, and a few posts in Lamb's own words. She, the same, cannot pronounce the last name, same person though. Quotation that she used as an erograph, an erograph. I cannot pronounce it, so please bear with me. I suck at pronouncing them. Lamb had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression. She had been prescribed several medications for her mental health issues. All these medications that I cannot pronounce, according to her family, who reported, who reportedly kept her mental illness private, Lam had no history of pseudo suicidal intentions or attempts. Although one report claimed she had previously gone missing for a brief period, Lam had a history of not taking her bipolar medication, and as a result, on several occasions, suffered hallucinations and would cause her to hide under her bed for refuge. She was hospitalized at least once for one of these episodes. For a trip to California, Lamb traveled alone on um, track and in and inner city buses. She visited the San Diego Zoo and posted photos taken there on social media. On January 20, 2016, no, on January 26th, there we go, she arrived in Los Angeles after two days. She checked in Los Angeles, into Los Angeles. After two days, she checked into the Cecil Hotel, near downtown. Downtown's Skid Row. Lam was initially assigned to, assigned a shared room on the hotel's fifth floor. However, her roommate complained about about what the hotel's lawyer would later describe as certain odd behavior. Eh, it's fine. It's not that bad. And Lamb was moved 
to a diff uh, to a room of her own after two days. According to Amy Price, the manager of the Cecil Hotel and stay on main at the time of Lamb's disappearance, Lamb was leaving notes for her roommates that said go home and, and go away, and would lock the door to the room and require a password for entry. A few days before her disappearance, Lamb attended a live taping of Conan in Burbank, but was escorted off the premises by security due to disruptive behavior. Basically what we're working with. I guess I was just standing in front of the den so one of them couldn't get out. Okay, disappearance. Lamb contacted her parents in British Columbia daily while traveling up until the day she was dis she disappeared. On January 31st, 2013, the day she was scheduled to check out of the Cecil Hotel and leave for Santa Cruz, her parents did not hear from her and called the LAPD, Los Angeles Police Department. Her fam family flew to Los Angeles to help with the search. Okay, we'll go on to help you again. Hotel staff who saw Lamb the day she was alone outside the hotel, Katie Orphan, manager of the last bookstore, was the only person who recalled seeing her that day. She was outgoing, very lively, very friendly, while getting gifts to take home to her family, Orphan told CNN. She was talking about what books she was going she was getting and whether or not and whether or not what she was getting would be too heavy to carry around as she traveled, Orphan added. It's kind of a messed up last name, in my opinion, but that's fine. Police searched the hotel to to the extent that they legally could. They searched Lamb's room and had dogs go through the building, including the rooftop, but the dogs were unsuccessful in, detect in detecting her scent. No sniff sniff. We didn't search every room, STG Rudy, Ru Rudy Lopez com com commented. Yep. On February 6th, the week after Lamb had last been seen, the LAPD decided more help was needed. Flyers uh, with her image were posted in the neighborhood and online. It brought the case to, it brought the case to the public's attention. Continue this after the hunt. We should just get them to run, and then whoever tries to turn on us is the weakest. Surveillance. 
camera on January 31st. In approximately two and a half minutes of footage, Lamp alone makes unusual movements and gestures. Gestures. She appears to press every button in the elevator panel, peers into the hallway, then leaves the elevator at one point while its doors remain open. While the, when the doors fail to close after she returns, she leaves. The door closes later. send her home, which is literally right there, and then we are wrecking territory, so we're gonna run up there while I'm reading this. The video drew, drew worldwide, worldwide internet in the case due to Lamb's strange behavior, and has been extensively analyzed and discussed. It was reposted widely, including on the Chinese video sharing site y Yoko. I guess it's kind of like YouTube, I think. Where it got 3 million views and 40,000 comments in the first 10 days. Many of the commenters found it unsettling to watch. Several theories emerged to explain her actions. One was that Lam was trying to get the elevator car to move in order to escape from someone who was pursuing her. Others suggest that she might be under the influence of nono drug, nono drug, or some other party drug, but no one was detected. But none was detected in her body when the bi when her bipolar disorder became known. The theory that she was having a psych psychic epi psychotic episode was also also emerged. Other viewers argued that the video had been tampered with before being made to the public. Besides the obscuring of the timestamp, they claimed parts that had been parts had been slowed down and nearly a minute of footage had been removed. They could have done to protect the identity of someone who otherwise would be in the video, either related or not to the disappearance. This is so unsettling. I don't like reading it. <gasps> but it's fine. Hang on. We only got 17 minutes left. The discovering of the body. During the search for Lamb, the guests at the Cecil Hotel beca began complaining about low water pressure. Where is this then? By the way. Some later claimed their water was colored black and had t had an unusual taste. Ew. On the morning of February 19th, San Diego Lopez, a hotel maintenance worker, found Lamb's body in one of four 1,000-gallon tanks, or 3,785 liters. Located on the roof, providing water to guest rooms, a kitchen, and a coffee shop. Ew. Just ew. Through the open hatch, he saw Lamb lying face up in the water. The tank was drained and cut open since its maintenance hatch was too small to accommodate equi equipment needed to remove Lamb's body. Ew. So unsettling. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> Where is sent post? Sent post is up here. Oh right, glass house. Do snow and marks because the um because when you jump when you yeah. 
time thing. And I ran past that post, of course. Yeah, and rock, of course. back to dead now. Okay, we're gonna get back to this, and my phone is slowly dying. It's fine. On February 21st, the Los Angeles coroner's office issued a finding of action drowning with bipolar disorder as a significant factor. The full coroner's report released in June stated that Lamb's body had been found naked. Knuckles. Knuckles. Clothing similar clo clothing similar to what she was wearing in the elevator video was floating in the water. Cl clothes like with a sand like particulate. Her watch and room key were also found with her. Mm. Lamb's body was moderately decomposed and bloated. It was mostly greenish with some marbling evident on the abdomen, abdomen and skin separated evident on the abdomen and skin marbling evident on the abdomen and skin separated separation evident there was no sign of physical trauma no no assault sa or suicide sewer uh sewer slide yes Toxicology tests showed traces consistent with prescription medication found among her belongings. Non prescribed um, meds such as Sintab and ibuprofen. Ibuprofen is a painkiller. I use it sometimes when I have a bad cramp or something. Where I accidentally hurt myself because I'm dumb. A very small quantity of alcohol, adult adult drink, adult drink, about 0.02 g percent was pre present, but no, but no other rec rec recreational drug. Investigators and experts have however noted that the concentration of her prescription med meds in her system included that she was under medicating and, or had stopped taking her medication recently because with a lot of medications i know they have like a half-life which basically means they stay in your body for a while or you at least feel the effects of them with a certain medication that i take i don't remember which one it is because i have to take a claritin one a mood stabilizer, kind of hormone slash mood stabilizer, and my um, Claritin allergy med, and my ADHD med. Other issues? But yeah, that's basically it. I think we're gonna be done reading for today, but I don't know. Tell me if you ever want more like spooky stuff. That actually kind of took us a while. That took up most of the episode.
sorry, I had a lost pup. basically one of the most disturbing cases I've read of because of like how does that happen how did she even get in the hat it was locked it just does not make sense anyways um Pups are slowly growing. This is good. Are you done? No. Okay, I can leave. Yee. Comment down below your favorite kind of lace chips. Mine are uh, probably either salt and vinegar or barbecue. They're both so good. It's hard to pick a fave. Just because of their flavor. Like they make they make my mouth water. Because of the, vin the vinegar. I don't know if you've ever had like a pickle. And I'm not talking about like regular size pickles. I'm talking about them baby pickles, them baby dill pickles. They're delicious by the way. But they're like 20 times more like vinegary. Like, if it's good, it's on my plate, because I usually put the my, my pickles on, like, a <clears throat> paper plate. I'm just like, <clears throat> yum. Oh my gosh, why are we getting so many sick pops? Mm, no, it's not territory. It's fine. We'll just get my mate some food. And then I can go to Terry. Or orange root serum. I don't know. Raise your hand in the comments or live chat or in the chat if you love Eminem. Well, not like love, love, but you like his music as I love his music. Wait, um, one of my favorite songs goes like, Guess who's back? Back again. Katie's back. Tell a friend. 
Mm, guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? I don't know what that was, but it was something. That was probably a bug. I don't know if something got messed up with her AI when we jumped ahead. Or something. Yeah, Crow won, so y'all will be seeing Crow next week. Okay, this is exciting. friends like to do is try and steal my phone. They also like to torture me. And anyway, they can't. It's like... But then again, Valen, you know, the gremlin, my future editor, is, um, QX to encourage me scaring the crap out of people. It's like, earlier today, my friends got a hold of a spray bottle and I had water in it and they started spraying me with it. And I was like, mm, you know what, stop. And they all stopped and I was on a call and they were like, stop guys. I don't like, I know how you don't like getting wet and I don't like getting wet. Like, like we don't mind water. Okay, this is a sensory issue thing. We both got the same sensory issue. It's kind of strange. We're like, really similar, me and Fallon. Okay. But it's like we were hanging, and he was like, Hey, yo, stop. Stop spraying each other. Because he knows that I don't mind water as long as I get it on me myself, basically. But it's like if I'm trying to wash my face or rinse hair dye out of my hair, and I get water dripping down my arms, I freak. But if I'm, like, playing in water, like if I'm at a, sw if I'm at a swim pool, um, a pond, or lake, where I'm taking a shower or bath, I'm completely fine. Same with Valen. But if we get water on, if I get water on my arms, or if I get water on myself non-consensually, and I don't want it to, I freak. Especially on my arms. <clears throat> it's, it's probably an autism thing or something. <clears throat> But yeah. It's kind of funny how similar me and Fallon are. We're also both really skinny. But I'm taller than him. He used to be taller than me. Did I ever tell you guys that? He could give me piggyback rides. He used to give me piggyback rides. Although he couldn't do it for long because he wasn't that strong. He's probably stronger now though. I don't know. I mean he could somehow tackle his friend who's like five six he's tall Blake I've never met this friend oh but I bet he's funny or something anyways time to end off the video here y'all 
So, you know, if you guys did enjoy this episode, then you might like others. Make sure you give this video a good old pause up and subscribe. Also, make sure you hit that bell notification so that way you don't miss any single time I upload. I really do hope you enjoy it. Make sure you leave a comment down below. I'll see you in the next one, and bye, guys.